What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the Chris Thorne Show. I'm your host, Chris Thorne. As always, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you watch my content. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, excuse the mask. Sorry, uh, I went to the dentist today, and uh, everything in like it seems to be healing pretty well. You know, I'm still not 100% there yet, but we're getting pretty close. You know, uh, just the bottom gums got the heal for what they was telling me for this also uh, I ain't mentioned I just came for the dentist so uh uh yeah so I ain't completely here yet so gotta still somewhat kind of keep this on well I really ain't gotta keep it on but I'm just keeping it on for safety you know so anyway uh I got a story I want to bring to y'all and I probably shouldn't be doing this story right now because I just had a death to my family but it's not about me you know uh I, I just got. I just feel like I got to bring this story to y'all to bring awareness to what's going on here. So uh, let's let's flip this over, ladies and gentlemen. The young lady that you see right here, her name is Maraja or Maraja, one of the two Pratt. Maraja or Maraja Pratt. She was 16 years old and she was attending a school called Essex High School, and I think that was down there in Houston. Well, this beautiful young lady got into a social media beef. And from my understanding, she went and met with the person who she had a beef with and things got out of control, got out of hand. But, but wait, there's another twist to this story. But right now, let's get into the basics first. So uh, let me take her down real quick. And... Have a listen. Social media beef was at the center of a confrontation in West Houston that left a 16 year old dead and two others in the hospital. ABC 13's Jessica Willie joins us live with the latest update on exactly what happened. Yeah, Lisa, the shooting happened right in front of the Wilcrest Baptist Church here behind me. The two surviving victims are out of surgery, according to family members. Police have a vague description of the shooter and the two other women involved, but a good starting point. The family of the 16-year-old who was killed says she was threatened on social media for months. They just came and started shooting. They, they killed my cousin. A 16 year old shot and killed her sister and friend wounded. Houston police say there were 15 gunshots here on Sharp View this afternoon, followed by five 911 calls. The violence police believe linked to social media. This appears to be involved in ongoing social media beef with our three victims here. Uh, that came to this location to engage the people. Relatives identified the victim as Marasia Pratt, a sophomore at Elsick High School. Kira Walton, her cousin, says she was a target on Instagram. She was just keep picking on her on Instagram, sending people her pictures, saying she was a prostitute and just messing with her and messing with her to the point my cousin used to cry about it. And today it all came to a head down the street from the teen's house where she and her sister went to meet her alleged harassers. But for you to come and bring a gun, I feel like it was premeditated. Police say a man got out of a car and fired. He and the two women he was with took off. Marasia's family have told police what they know. I just feel like it was just jealousy. It was just jealousy. It was just jealousy. You killed her over jealousy. The 16 year old loved school and wanted to go to college. Her smile, like she just, she was a, a great girl. And I hate that this happened to her. I really do. Police are now looking for those involved. I feel like my whole soul just ripped out of my heart. Like this, this is hard on my family. It's so hard on us. Jessica Willie, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. It's all right. <clears throat> There's a. Y'all heard all that, right? Social media beef. Pretty much a young lady was getting called prostitutes. They was fucking with her and doing all types of stuff. And the lady lost her life. But now, here's where the twist at. Listen to this. She was only 16. She was just a baby. She was just a baby. 
She was young and beautiful, her whole life ahead of her, but at just 16, Marija Pratt was killed during a fight her family says escalated beyond their imagination. I was running straight down, straight down the street, and I seen bullets flying off the rim of the tire. Her older sister's telling us another family member had been harassing their little sister on social media. It was really family beef. They This was family beef. Family beef. This was family. And I think she finna say they all was had some words back and forth. We was having words with each other over social media. It's they was having words with each other over social media. I don't know how old this woman is, but she looks like she's an adult. But let's continue. It's been going on. But yesterday, they say that family member initiated a meeting to confront the feud outside this church at Wilcrest and Sharpview Drive. The family says they did expect to fight, but did not expect the gunfire. They say a man who drove their family member to the church began shooting at the group. I seen him. He stood at the side of the car and he just started shooting. He was short and dark. One bullet hitting older sister to Cambry, who is now recovering at home. They shot me, but I don't care. My sister is gone. Houston police say that shooter drove away in a red Chrysler 200. They are still searching for him. If you have information on who killed this teen, please call police. It so that's what I want to try to hear, the twist. The twist to this story was... It was another family member that they would beef with. Not nobody else from a school or anything. This was another family member. Y'all heard the lady right there that said, we all was having some words back and forth. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Y'all got young teenagers in the house or teenager, whichever one of the two, teenager or teenagers in the house. Y'all see all this stuff going on. All right. And instead of y'all saying, look, y'all, y'all cut this shit out. There is too much stuff that's going on right now, and we losing each other rapidly. So whatever y'all got going on, look, let's just go talk it out. See, can we come to some kind of resolution? Y'all are young girls. Y'all got a lot to live for. Y'all are young girls. Y'all not even had a high school yet. So come on with the, stop with the bullshit. Stop. Nope. Y'all was engaging in it and not only engaging in it. Y'all walked down there, which I'm reading in a minute. Y'all walked down there because the, I guess the girl, whoever invited y'all for a fight. They invited y'all for a fight. And I and I guarantee you, one of the things that was said in the argument was, bitch, I bet you won't pull up. Cause that's how it goes nowadays. Nigga, I bet you won't pull up. Bitch, I bet you won't pull up. And you know how a lot of us is. We want to show that we're not no punk bitch. So we're gonna go and pull up. Never thinking about what well, damn this 2020. Niggas niggas and females ain't fighting no more. They shooting. No. But no, nope. I want to meet up. I want to fight. Cause y'all been saying too much shit about me. Y'all got me fucked up. And I get it. Family members fight. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But here's the thing though. These are young girls. Well, at least she was. And it's almost like nobody was there to guide her and say, you know, this shit ain't even not like that. Or this shit ain't even worth it, you know? Just leave each other alone. Just leave each other alone. When the smoke clear, and when it's time, maybe y'all can talk again. And see, this is why I say I'm glad they ain't got no children, because for me now, hearing this story, if I had a daughter, 
and more like if I had a son too. I will have to put a curfew on this internet. And maybe I'll put a curfew on this phone. Maybe at the nine or 10 o'clock, internet off. Give me that phone. Because it's a distraction. It's a distraction. So bad that it led to this. So if the internet and social media can distract you this bad, then baby girl or baby boy, I don't think you need it right now because you cannot handle it. Now that's my opinion. I don't know how a lot of y'all feel about it, but that's my opinion about it. All right. That's, that's what I had to do. Or like some people, I think some people do do this. I heard people say they do this now at a certain time. They shut down the, uh, the Wi-Fi. period. They shut it down. At a certain amount of time, they did shut the whole Wi-Fi down. And I say to to you people who are doing that, you mothers and dads, y'all doing that, kudos to y'all. Kudos to y'all, because long as the bill paid or whatnot, they ain't going to be there tomorrow. So when 9 or 10 or however you got your household ran, at a certain amount of time, the Wi-Fi is unplugged. At a certain amount of time, hey, y'all give me y'all phones. I want y'all to focus instead of distracted. Now these folks going, y'all should have called another family or prostitutes and all this shit like that. And, you know, and, and, it, and it hurts me to hear young teenagers talk like that. Even though I was a teenager once, but I don't think I should have called no girl no prostitutes or shit like that. I, not that I can recall. But these young ladies calling people prostitutes and all this stuff like that. How do you know? How do you know? What the hell? And for what it sounds like right now, it does sound like jealousy. But jealousy over what, though? Jealousy over what? What some of y'all be saying, child? Mm. If me, if me can say that now, I don't know if me can say that, child. All right, guys, so here how the story reads. A family member of 16-year-old shot and killed down the street from her home. It's actually a shooter to turn himself in. Mariah Pratt was a sophomore. This girl was a sophomore. She had two more years in school. Probably could have graduated, because I know some people can graduate early, depending on their credentials. They could graduate early. It could have been a possibility. The girl probably could have graduated early. Essex High School and the youngest of six children. Family was first. She loved her family, and that's gone. They took it away from me. They took that away from me. They took that away from me, said her mother, Marsha Nuttall, Nut, Nut, Nuttall, or whatever you say. I don't know. Mariah was shot on Monday in what her sisters called a family feud that escalated. And, and y'all heard the lady say, this has been going on for a while. It's been going on for a while. And, and none of you grown people seen these teenagers doing this stuff and say, look, this stuff been going on too long. Y'all stop it, all right? Come on now, y'all stop it. This is stupid. Nobody said that. Hmm? Or oh, maybe I'll give you a bit of a doubt say one of y'all did say that, but, you know, everybody's so hard-headed and nobody want to listen. I, I don't know. I don't know. It was really family beef. Look at that. It was really family beef. We are having words with each other over social media. It's been going on, said Pre Pratt, if I said her name right. It happened outside Weircrest Baptist Church. And it, this is my church. Y'all, it is my church. At Shawfruit Drive and Weircrest Road when Mariah Pry or Pre, another sister to Cambry and their male friend. Walk down their street to meet up with this family member. So all of y'all walk down the street 
it took all y'all to walk down the street to meet who this whoever this family member is. She was only 16. She was just a baby. She was just a baby. But see, y'all knew that before y'all went down the street, though. Y'all knew that. So understand what I said earlier. The young generation, instead of y'all teaching them, hey, this is bullshit. Y'all engaging in the shit. I don't know, but what I know, I don't, I don't have any children, so maybe, maybe it's something that I'm missing. I don't know. The sister said that family member initiated me to confront the few and told ABC they did expect to fight, so y'all, y'all wanted to fight, but did not expect the gunfire. The sister said a man who drove their family member to the church began shooting at the group. Wow. I seen him. He stood outside of the car and he just started shooting. He was short and dark, said Pry, Pre, whatever his name is. When the bullets fired, hit the Cambry, who showed ABC 13 her wounds and she recovers from home. They shot me, but I don't care. My sister is gone, said the Cambry. Here's the police said the shooter drove away in a red Christ light to fire 15 bullets. They are still searching for him and are looking for information on the fatal shooting. The family created a GoFundMe account to help cover the unexpected cost of the funeral services. Marajah Shooting Death was one of the six reported shootings in the city of Houston in the past two days. That's this the map where all that, everything took place. Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo says the community needs to come forward. Step up on not just a crime that's been committed, but any threat to our fellow Houstonians throughout our region. Acevedo said during a news briefing. Then it goes on to say to find out what type of crimes are taking place in your area or areas around you. The community map can help. The map is used to connect law enforcement with community to help reduce crime. Brewers can search for criminal and non-criminal homicide, theft, and burglary activities. The map also allows viewers to search for a specific date a crime occurred and even take a look at what law enforcement agencies have responded to. And um, that is the article. That is the article. And uh, so at the end of the day, you know, here's how I feel about this whole thing. I have mixed emotions. One side of me, I want to feel sad. I do because this is a young lady. I mean, a beautiful young lady, you know? This is a young lady who could have possibly had things going for herself, could have possibly graduated early. Because again, some people can't graduate earlier depending on their credentials. And I hate that, you know, she succumbed to the negative evil of social media and then had nobody there to tell her, you know, hey, you know, this is social media. It comes with the bitter and sweet. And you can't uh, take what's being said, what's being thrown out. Then, you know, you need to focus more on school right now than social media. She didn't have nobody to tell her that. She had people that were joining in, on, join in with her, talking shit to somebody else. And not only that, had encouraged her to go fight. And the young lady lost her life. I want to feel sad because she lost her life. And I want to say she didn't know no better. But the other side of me, you know, I'm just like, you know, why, why feel sorry? How can I feel sorry? With the way this story is going, how can I feel sorry? And that's what the other side of me is saying. So I got mixed emotions about this whole thing. You know, and I got a feeling there's morphine to come out. Because now I want to know what started all this. Who started it? All right? Who egged it on? Or the worst case scenario was this whole thing a setup. Got to think about that too. Worst case scenario, was this whole thing a setup? Because y'all know how family members is. They are jealous of you, depending on how 
envious their jealousy is, they will try to hurt you. They want to see you hurt more than see you happy. We all have been down that road. We all have a time and a time or two in our life. We'd have been down that road. So I ended with this, you know, uh, rest in peace, young lady. You know, I hate that this happened. I wish you would have made a better decision. I wish you had made a better decision. But it's too late to say shoulda, coulda, woulda now. It's too late to say that. All right? And I hope that you get justice. But I just had mixed emotions about this whole damn thing. And I want to know what y'all, how y'all feel about this as well. And again, I apologize for the face mask. You know, I'm still healing at the mouth. Like I said, we, I'm almost there. Well, I'm able to take it off and I can talk freely without the mask, you know. Um, but hopefully y'all can hear everything that I'm saying. All right. But other than that, though, <sighs> I'm your man, Chris Thorns. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And as always, leave your thoughts. All right. I'm out. Peace.